On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, a Prius. I'm kidding. We're just taking that to O'Reilly's. What is going on guys? I am Watch JR Go and today we are back on my 2000 Corvette. We've got the new engine in and we're wrapping up a bunch of stuff, but I needed a radiator. That's at O'Reilly's. I needed sway bar and links to put everything back together. All that's at O'Reilly's. So let's head over there and get that right now. And the suspension just came in too. So today we can button up a lot of this car. Let's go. And we're here just like that. Worked over here in the Prius. You guys know how those Priuses have warped for us. Let's pick up some parts. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you, you guys not. talking about me? Yeah. Yeah. All right, we got a radiator, got some sway bar and links. We're out of here. Thanks, guys. Everyone. Look at Scott's tag. Because <laughs> it's electric. Ah. And we are back at it again with the white vans. Here we have the Z06 suspension straight from AC Delco. Just what we needed. This actually came in multiple days because of stock issues, as you guys would expect. So I bought these and they were like, well, it's going to be a bit. Now it's here. These are our rears that are much better than the old ones. As you can see, I should be able to push these down and they should rebound very nicely, just like that. Anyway, we're ready to slap these in the car and I've got new sway bar and links because the old ones are completely rotten. So these are K50136s. How to do sway bar and links on your C5 if you haven't done them. I bet they're bad. Honestly, these things are always bad. So these are upgraded part apparently it does look like these are gonna fit so we'll go ahead and open them up so hopefully this works uh, without me having to back this up obviously i don't have a lot of hope for that these do have uh, internal torques that you can use to hold the uh, ball joint while you pull the nut off but we're just gonna hope that it comes apart so it is not coming apart at all okay trying again this time we've got the impact on the torque side and a wrench to hold the nut that will not come off. All right, let me get a ratchet and we'll break it loose. All right, we're finally making some progress here. I'm hoping the impact will take this thing apart. So let's try. I just don't think it has enough power because this is like covered in dirt and just kind of stuck together. Oop. It works. We got it off. So we've got both sides of the car lifted up with screw jacks. We have to obviously lift up the lower control arm so we can get everything into the right suspension geometry to change out the sway bar links. And of course, one of the fun parts is the, uh, well, my Torx bit just snapped off in the lower. It was so tight and it had been on there for so long. So we're down one Torx bit, but the new ones are hex instead of Torx, which is cool. And we should be ready to swap this thing in here. So it's gonna be a little tight. Oh man, I'm gonna wreck my finger doing this. We got it. All right, we can just toss our nuts on there and we're ready to change the shocks and bolt this whole thing back together. Yeah, I know. That's about as tight as they need to be. So let me get an extension in here. You'll need about a 12 inch extension so you can get your ratchet all the way into the corner and that should wrap up the sway bar and link change. Almost home. This is a nice job once you get it apart. But getting it apart, we ended up breaking it in half. Yee wee! <laughs> Look how bad these were. I mean, they were completely gone. So, that should solve some noise out of the rear end, I hope. And of course, we did snap that one in half because the old ones were composite compared to the nice new metal ones. So, we've got those all back together. They're reverse thread. If you Needed to, if you wondered why you're trying to take it out and it wasn't working, they are reverse thread. All right, let's get this shock absorber out of here. This should just rip it right off uh, if everything works as planned. Boom, boom. Yeah, nothing better than that. And of course the top bolts are already out because we took them out when we dropped the whole thing. Boom, that worked out well. Oh man, it's a lot harder to do when you don't have all your weight on it. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Right into place, straight to jail, right away. 
tightening up those top bolts to the shock. These are a place you want to be very careful because they're often, if the pressure is on the shock wrong, you'll end up uh, either cross threading the bolt or not getting it lined up at all. So I have a ton of uh, upward lift on the lower control arm so that we can get this all the way into place. Whoop, if I can get the socket on. So obviously getting that upper knuckle back on, it's, it's nice if you have two people, so Darrell and I did that together. We didn't shoot that, but basically it involves just running up the screw jack and then with one person kind of uh, pushing down on the upper control arm, the other one just kind of slides it right in. So it went right in, and now it's time to put our brakes back on. We got the chalkboard sound out of these brakes. All right, they should go right on because nothing's moved. And now our brakes can go back on. Oh yeah. And this side will be wrapped up other than the e-brake. Uh, so I'll go ahead and tighten that down. But first let's show you guys the e-brake here. To do the e-brake, uh, it's got a little hole in the bracket right there. If you can see that hole I'm pointing at, you feed this thing down through there. And then that pops on. And this just kind of goes around there and hooks on this thing. So we'll go ahead and pop it in and then twist this thing and just get it to pop on. Just like that, that's how the e-brake works. And even cooler, it has these little bad boys right here to hold the uh, ABS sensor, speed sensor wires right where they belong. Oh, that needs to go like that. Boom. One side done. So we went ahead and wrapped up the driver's side. You can see it's all buttoned up now. New sway bar inlet, new shock absorber, all put back together, tightened down, brakes are on. So the entire rear end is back together and I was gonna go ahead and put the wheels on because obviously we are ready for that. At least the, the original wheels, we'll use those for our first drive probably. Then try to move to our C8 wheels, but um, the exhaust needs to go on and the exhaust is just easier if the wheels aren't on because there's a lot of threading and stuff like that to get over the CVs and back to here. So we're just gonna kind of leave it as is for now and move back to the front of this thing. So let's get back to wiring it uh, first floor cleaner because there's oil everywhere. Now we're on to our front suspension here. The bolts for the front suspension are kind of covered up by the washer fluid and the radiator overflow tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop those out real quick. And I don't think I actually need to remove anything here. I just need to lift it up so I can get the big impact in here. Of course, here's our shock ready to go. So that is all it needs. Uh, don't break the line to the washers. Plenty of room. Oh, look at that. The connector for the pump was unhooked all along. Hmm. Well, I'm glad I got underneath here and figured out what was going on, even though I didn't even know there was a problem. So this should make quick work of the shock absorber. Come on. Well, I had to give up on the big impact. It was not getting it done. So we've got the crescent wrench on the top of the shock to grab the little squared off nipple they give you to grab onto and I think we made some progress so I'm gonna try one more time with the impact to try to save some time here. We finally got the nut off of that thing. It took way longer than it should have and the shock should be falling out just like that. Here's our old shock. Oh yeah this is this is definitely a bad one. So we are ready to toss the new one in here. And then we've got the metal washer that goes on top and the nut. First one is done. Uh, if I didn't show you guys, crescent wrench works perfect for the top, 15 for the nut, and it should just take you a couple seconds to get that all knocked out. And then of course, put your washer fluid reservoir back in, plug in your pump when you find out it wasn't plugged in before. I wonder why they don't work. All right, anytime now, there it goes and drop this thing back onto its studs. Passenger side, we pull the cooling reservoir and try not to spill it because this hose is connected to nothing. Nope, just kidding. We're spilling coolant. The cooling reservoir is gonna go on top of the engine because that's what the uh, hoses will allow us to do. Sweet, and now we've got plenty of access to pull this. Passenger side shock is all installed now. Same drill over and over, crescent wrench, 15 millimeter, lots of time, and you will get it done. So 
We've got our Z06 suspension in the car now. We're back to hooking, wiring up. And while I was at it, of course, I hooked up the coolant reservoir and started putting a couple hoses back on the water pump. So we'll keep right on rocking. Just made another call. I think we have ordered the last part we need. Well, two more sway bar and links. I didn't realize they came in single packs. And I thought I had bought four of them. It turns out I only bought two of them. So we've got the rear done. We're waiting on the front on the sway bar and links. And of course, there was the one missing speed sensor harness that is on the way too. So the rest of today, now we have all the Z06 shocks in and the back of the car all put together. I think we're gonna go ahead and lift this thing up and finish wiring everything we can underneath it, get the starter back in here. And that gets us so close to home. So let's get to it. Plugging everything in here. This is our uh, low oil or the oil pan sender there. And crank position is gonna sneak up in here. And these things are all just kind of falling right back into place. We've got this O2 sensor that plugs in right here. Basically just Plug in all the connectors, they all just match up, honestly. I mean, the three pins go to the three pins, four pins go to the four pins. You'll figure it out. And now there's a bunch of grounds. Obviously this is power to the starter. This is a chassis ground. And then uh, there's another chassis, well block ground that's gotta get hooked up there. This goes to the starter. And I think all these stack up on the starter. We've got everything else in there. You can see I've got the grounds hooked up, crank position, all that fun stuff. Uh, there's a little purple wire that's your actual starter control there and then all the other wires uh rust gray and red if you're doing this yourself all need to land on that terminal so you can just stack up all the battery it's i mean that's the main battery connection for the vehicle right there we're gonna go ahead and try to hook up the wires first and then slide the starter back up in well we'll see it's pretty hard to do this no matter what because once the starter is actually in you don't have a lot of access to the terminals so you kind of have to do it like this buttoning up our uh, dust cover there Seems like that's good. This uh, clamp here also holds the lines on to the transmission cooler. So I'll get this tightened down and we're done on this side of the engine. Totally done over here. So that's pretty awesome. Other than the exhaust, but we're hooking the engine up before the exhaust. Okay, we just got the steering shaft hooked back up and I didn't see how it came apart. Josh took it apart. So I had to figure that out, but it's just like a squeezy clamp basically. So you pull out that black bolt way down there you can see that single black bolt and then it just drops right on and it kind of clamps onto it super simple i thought it needed to collapse or something like that but the steering shaft is actually very easy obviously while that's disconnected do not turn the steering wheel because you'll snap the clock spring wires and it's over no more airbags for you so uh, i know uh, i'm pretty sure they worked in this so i didn't want to mess that up anyway i think we've hooked everything up for the day I mean, obviously the alternator's not on here. I got a few things in the back of the head that are probably gonna take me two or three hours because, uh, I mean, it's the back of the head. You can't see any of it. You do it all by feel. And uh, there's a little T that has to connect two of the vacuum lines and I need to get that, a substitute for that. So we could try to patch it together, but I think I'm gonna try to buy the original GM part, which is probably pretty rare. I hope the dealership has it. That's pretty much the only thing holding us up at this point. We've got everything else hooked up today, which I'm super pumped about. We're so close to starting this engine up. I mean, it's time to get excited. The whole back end's done, like I said earlier, and uh, the starter's in, all the wiring on the bottom's done, lower O2s are hooked back up. Just so few things left to go here. And uh, those little things, the little things are what's gonna take the next few hours because uh, I should have hooked up everything on the back of the head before we sent it home but I would have had to climb up and stand on the engine again while it was going in. I didn't do it then, so I get to pay for it now. So that'll take a long time. Obviously you can't see any of it. All of those connections are made back here, literally like underneath the cowl and the windshield is where all that's going. So there's definitely no way to show you any of that, but you have seen it before in previous Corvette videos because we've pulled the intake before, which definitely makes it very easy. So that is it for today, guys. I hope you're getting as excited as I am about this thing finally running. I know I took like a week break from it. I was just tired of the Corvette, honestly. We've done a lot of them lately and uh, eventually it starts to feel like you're just working on the same thing all the time. So I was super happy to go work on some other things like that crazy rare RAV4 that's coming up in my aunt's car and anyone else who would bring their car over. I was like, I'll work on your car. I don't need any money. I don't care. I just want to work on something that's not this. And uh, it worked out. It was a good break. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop. Watch Jerry.com for cool shirts. Not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time.
pretty sure we gotta pull the intake. I don't think I can get my hand back there anymore. That's that's the whole hold up here is that I gotta pull those bolts and it just needs to slide forward like, I think it's gotta come off. I know there's always people that want this build to go faster, but the issue is I'm replacing like, <laughs> really, while you're in there, tons of parts that usually you would just throw it all back together. But uh, here we are pulling out entire parts that could have been left alone uh, because I do want all of this to be good. I'm probably gonna drive this. Corvettes get 30 miles a gallon. This GTR gets like, I don't know, on E85, it probably gets 10. Uh, but on 91, it's like double that. It probably gets close to 20. It's, it's weird. It should be 20%, but it seems like it lasts forever on 91 and it lasts like two days or three days of driving on E85. And on, I never drive this, so I really want this sold and I wanna drive the Corvette.